بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ہادیہ سلطان سینئر لیکچرر اینڈ آڈیولوجسٹ ایٹ یونیورسٹی آف لاہور ڈپارٹمنٹ آف ری ہیبلیٹیشن سائنسز فیکلٹی آف الائڈ ہیلتھ سائنسز آئی ہیو ڈن مائی بی ایس آنرس فرام کنگ ایڈورڈ میڈیکل یونیورسٹی اینڈ ماسٹرس فرام یونیورسٹی آف لاہور ٹوڈے دا ٹاپک آف آور ڈسکشن از ایئر کنڈکشن اینڈ بون کنڈکشن پروسیجر اور آڈیومیٹری ان پیوٹون آڈیومیٹری The learning objectives are, in this lecture we will discuss about introduction of air conduction audiometry, what is the procedure of air conduction audiometry, what is the purpose of air conduction, why we do air conduction and what are its clinical findings. Air conduction audiometry. Before we start about air conduction audiometry, we should know about what is pure tone audiometry because it is the procedure in which we perform in pure tone audiometry. Pure tone audiometry is basically an hearing test in which we measure the exact threshold of hearing. What is audiometry? Audio means sound and metry means measurement. And pure tone are single tone sounds. So in pure tone audiometry, we measure the different sounds at different intensity and frequency levels. levels. In pure tone audiometry, what is the procedure of air conduction audiometry? In uh, air conduction audiometry, we measure the different thresholds of hearing at different intensities and frequencies. Air conduction audiometry tells us about the degree of hearing loss, but it does not tell us about the type of hearing loss. Type of hearing loss will be identified by doing the bone conduction audiometry, which we will discuss after the air conduction audiometry. Okay, what are the rules of uh, air conduction audiometry? First of all, we uh, should know that the uh, placement of uh, headphones uh, should be carefully done by the clinician or audiologist or the uh, person who is performing the Uh, uh, pure tone audiometry or air conduction procedure. All interfering hairs that should be pushed out or the earrings uh, should be removed when it possible. Eyeglasses should be removed of the patient. Uh, some patients feel easy with their eyeglasses. So if they are comfortable with eyeglasses, you should not remove. But sometimes it makes it uncomfortable as the earphones squishes press, uh, presses on the temple bar of the eyeglass. Some patients are reluctant to remove their eyeglasses as they feel more comfortable and relaxed. So uh, the patient when fe he is feeling uh, comfortable, you should be, it's your responsibility to uh, place uh, that you should place the headphones as uh, like it should not be displaced from their position. Most earphone cushions are the hard rubber supraoral type fitting tightly against the external ear. The phones should be positioned so that their diaphragms are aimed directly to the opening of ear canal. It should be directly placed as its diaphragm is in front of the ear canal. The yokes that hold the phones may be pulled down so that the headset is its most extended position. While the clinician is holding the phones against the ears, the size of the headset can be adjusted for a right fit. Some patients' outer ear collapse during the placement so that it causes an artificial conductive hearing loss which can mislead the diagnosis that would not be the conductive hearing loss but if you not place it properly, it can cause the conductive hearing loss. loss of the patient that would be the wrong uh, diagnosis. Okay, what are the instructions which we are going to uh, give to the patient that are you are going to hear a series of tone first in the right ear or one ear or then other in the left ear or the other ear. When you hear a tone, we will instruct the patient that whenever you will hear the tone, you have to tell us by raising your hand or pressing the switch button. If Keep it up as long as you hear it and put your hand down quickly or the keep uh, or you should not press the button when you are not hearing the sound. Again, remember to the patient that he should signal every time when he is listening the tone. In equal hearing or normal hearing, first check the right ear or the other hand the better ear first. So it's your uh, responsibility that you will uh, check the right ear first or left ear first. It's your choice. 
what is the procedure of air conduction audiometry? The selection of which ear is to test first is purely arbitrarily unless a different hearing sensitivity between the ear is known or suspected in which the case better ear should be tested first. It is a choice of clinician that which ear he should uh, test first but mostly we uh, take the history of the patient and we have a rough idea with the communication that which uh, ear is better ear or which ear is suspected with the hearing loss so if we know about that during the history of the patient so we should check the better ear first otherwise we can check the right ear first Frequency order probably does not affect results, although most audiologists prefer to test at 1000 Hz initially. Test higher frequencies in ascending order, reset 1000 Hz, and then lower frequencies in descending order. This means that you should check firstly the 1000 Hz frequency. Why? Because it is the frequency that is mostly audible to all of the patients or humans. It is the frequency that is most audible to the uh, humans and then you should uh, check with the ascending order for firstly 1000 hertz then 2000 hertz 4000 hertz 8000 hertz and then again recheck the 1000 hertz frequency and then 500 and 250 hertz this is the procedure of normally we are doing during the air conduction audiometry but your result will not be affected by checking it randomly some audiologists feel the, that there is a useful information is gained from 125 by measuring 125 hertz frequency or threshold while other audiologists believe that its frequency can be predicted from 250 hertz results. So uh, most of the times we start from 250 hertz and not measure 125 hertz but some clinicians can do this. This is all, this also not affect your results. More audiologists sample hearing only at octave points. So most of the time Times we measure most of the times we measure the octave points like uh, uh, the frequencies of 1000 hertz 2000 hertz 4000 hertz whereas others still prefer of detail uh, resulting from the testing mid octave frequencies like 750 hertz 1500 hertz 3000 and 6000 hertz in the guidelines of Society of Asia, that is American Speech Language Hearing Association, prudently recommends that mid-octave points be tested with the difference of 20 decibels or more is seen in the thresholds of adjacent octaves. So according to the Asha, we should uh, measure the mid-octave frequencies whenever there will be the difference of 20 decibels or more in the adjacent frequencies then we should measure for example if the patient is listening at 40 decibels at 1000 hertz and 65 to 70 decibels at 2000 hertz then you have to uh, check the mid-octave frequency that is the 1500 hertz so over the years a number of different procedures had been devised for determining pure tone thresholds some audiologists have used automatically pulse tones and some use the manual pulse tones some have used the descending technique whereby the tone is presented above the threshold and lowered in intensity until patient signal that they can no longer hear it so this is the procedure during the air conduction audiometry in which we check the thresholds by the technique that is the 10 down 5 up technique in which uh, for example when the patient is listening at 50 decibel hertz 50 decibel uh, you have to less the uh, its frequency for 40 hertz and when he is not listening you will increase the intensity level of 5 decibels uh, Kahart and Jurger 1959 invested several pure tone procedures and found there are no real, real difference in results obtained with different methods. So Kahart and Jurger tells us that there will be no uh, difference or no uh, method will be affected, no results will be affected while doing the different type, different uh, procedures by do, doing air conduction audiometry with different methods. The procedure recommended here based on Kahart's and Jurger suggestion. Okay, testing at 1000 hertz. Uh, uh, frequency because this frequency is easily heard by most people and has been said to have high test re uh, result reliability as I told you earlier that 1000 hertz frequency is mostly audible to all of the uh, humans so it is uh, checked first because it has more reliability than all other uh, frequent intensities frequencies 
a pure tone a pure test tone is presented initially at 30 decibel hearing loss if a response is obtained it suggests that the 30 decibel tone is above the patient's threshold so firstly it's your choice you will uh, you can give the response you can start the test by doing the 50 decibel or 30 decibel 30 to 50 decibels range is recommended for starting the test after response is obtained the level is lowered in 10 decibel step each time a tone is introduced it is maintained for one to two seconds so you have to present the tone for one or two seconds the threshold is the lowest level at which the patient can correctly identify at least three out of six presentations so patient should uh, identify the three tones out of six presentations you will give the tone after one or two seconds four one or two or three seconds then the patient will respond and you will mark it for three consecutive intensities as thresholds are obtained at each frequency they must be recorded on the data sheet so all of your results will be recorded on the data sheet that is called an audiogram some audiologists prefer to record the results directly on a graph called an audiogram and some of the machines have direct attachment with laptop so you can print or it may print with the audiogram what is the pure tone average? After the air conduction thresholds have been recorded, the average threshold level for each year at 500, 1000 and 2000 hertz threshold uh, should be recorded. This is called as pure tone average in which we will plus these uh, frequencies and then divide by 3 to uh, make it pure tone average. Its average will be counted and it is useful for, for predicting the threshold for speech as well as for establishing the degree of communication impact imposed by the hearing loss. So this would be your average uh, threshold that the for example the patient is listening at 45 decibel or 50 decibel or 70 decibel or 80 decibel this will count your pure tone average and now what will be the clinical findings for using the hearing aids for uh, in which loss or in which type you can uh, use the hearing aids for PTA whenever there will be the 10 to 15 decibel this is the normal hearing you don't need to wear any hearing aid in which 16 to 25 there is a slight hearing loss 26 to 40 there will be the mild hearing loss so uh, we will not consider the hearing aid in mild hearing loss and in 41 to 55 there will be the moderate hearing loss the patient will be needed the hearing aid for um, wearing for their improvement of hearing 56 to 70 decibels hearing loss there will be the moderately severe hearing loss in which definitely you need an hearing aid and further moving on 71 to 90 decibels hearing loss or above the 90 decibels hearing loss there will be the need of hearing aid and you will uh, have to wear the hearing aid so this is the air conduction audiometry procedure. We will discuss the bone conduction audiometry procedure in the next lecture. These are the references of the air conduction audiometry lecture and thank you.